Welcome, welcome, welcome to Hope Today. My name is Corey Lankford and I am joined by Angela Madden. And let me tell you this right now. If you are seeing this right now, God is not done with you. He says his mercies are new every morning. Every day his mercies are new and he's not done with you. And it's a special day. Happy Valentine's Day and Ash Wednesday. What a combination. Yes, it's all about love. It's about the one who is love. And I'm excited to celebrate it with you. I am excited as well. It is a beautiful love day. And let me tell you, I know everybody's not excited about Valentine's Day all the time. Um, if you feel like, I don't have anybody special in my life, or I wish I had someone, and some people avoid social media altogether, I don't want to see all the love, and other people have, might have pressure to say, I didn't come up with anything, I didn't think about anything, but let me tell you this right now, love doesn't have to be limited to one day. It shouldn't be limited to one day. This is just actually a day that focuses on that, but please don't let that discourage you. Know that the love of God is continual, and the love that you give to yourself is something incredibly big that God wants us to do more in our lives. And we could talk a little bit more about that because I've learned a lot about what yeah. self-love truly, truly means. Yeah, I mean, God is love, right? He is the author of love. And with him and through him and by him, it is critical that we have a powerful relationship, that we understand what he does and how he operates. And to have that, we pray. You know, we all know we need to pray. We even know the effectiveness of prayer. But why is it so hard to bring ourselves to pray at times? Why is it that when life throws us pain, prayer is often the first thing to go? Well, today we will sit down with author Erin Warren to discuss how she has found faith, comfort, and hope through prayer and how we can too. You know, Corey, you're talking about love. It's Valentine's Day, the beginning of the Lent season, and our heart and our aim and our attention is focused on the one who is love. I think that prayer is the means by which we recognize who he is mm -hmm. and who he is in me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and in that time of recognizing who he is, what, what God often does is the more we pursue him, we're actually pursuing the level of identity that he has given to us. Meaning that he, areas of us are locked up in God. Yeah. So when we pursue after God, we're really getting a greater view of how he sees us. Because I'm gonna tell you something about love since we're talking about it. Relationships will give you so many identities that God did not intend for you, especially when you get into the wrong relationship. And then you start to feel that you're not beautiful, you're not lovely, you're not worthy. And this sometimes translates into our relationship with God. So when God is asking you to do something or God is, is, is saying you are this, you're always thinking how you felt about that relationship. So we're going to put a stop to that and let God give us an identity. Listen, right now we're going to play a game called Stump the Host. All right, we're going to see how we do with these <laughs> questions here. This is a love and marriage theme today, so we're going to ask questions about that. All right, here we go. Question number one. Who was commanded by an angel to marry a specific woman? Well, now, you know, you think of Mary, right? right? You right. think of Joseph. Right. But I also think of Hosea. So I, oh. I don't know. Oh. Who should we go with, Corey? Who was commanded by an angel to marry a specific woman? Now, now see, yeah. Joseph was already married to Mary at the time. He was a taker. So <laughs> maybe it is Hosea. Who would you say? Final okay, answer? Go, yeah, Hosea. Hosea. Oh, was it Joseph? It was yeah. Joseph. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, you take the next one. <laughs> so the answer was Joseph. That was found in Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Who was commanded by God to marry a harlot and be a good husband to an unfaithful wife? Now, we just said that. That's Hosea. <laughs> yes, Hosea. Yes. Yay! Close. We were close. We were in that vicinity here. I'm sorry. That was Hosea me. 1, 2 through 3. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Third question. Who told his father regarding a woman, get her for me, for she looks good to me? Now, I think that might have been Samson. Okay. Because when he, he wasn't supposed to be with uh, a, a Philistine okay. woman, that was before Delilah, his first one. I think it might have been Samson. Okay. But wait, what do you think? What do you think? Let's go with it. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, we in here. Samson is the answer. That is Judges 14, one through three. Had to redeem myself. Real yeah, quick. I mean, yeah. We, we messed up Joseph. I mean, how are you going to mess up I'm Joseph? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Grace and mercy is here. Yes. Oh, listen. Prayer is a conversation with God, a means of connecting our heart with His. But why do we often struggle to connect? How do we grow in faith? And is God still faithful when life doesn't go as planned? Author Aaron Warren set out to help you and me not only see the importance of prayer, but to turn it into delight. In her new book, Everyday Prayers for Faith, Finding Confidence in God No Matter What, Aaron takes us on a beautiful 30-day journey to trusting God more and joins us now. Aaron, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you so much, Angela and Corey, for having me. I'm so glad to be here. We're glad to have you on this Valentine's. I hope you got some of those trivia questions right with us. <laughs> well, I'll say the first one stumped me too. I was like, oh, that's Hosea. I said the same thing. So but see, I'm also I super think... impressed with Corey's knowledge because I was thinking, um, I was thinking um, one of the, oh gosh, it just totally slipped. Jacob, was it Jacob? Jacob and Rebecca, Jacob and oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was good too. So I was thinking that and um, I was like, oh man, let me go, Corey. Corey drank his coffee this morning. He's sharp. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Well, Aaron, I am so excited to hop into your book and to talk more about prayer. I understand that your book is actually one of the installments of the Million Moms Prayer series or Million Praying Moms series. Mm -hmm. Tell us what exactly this Million Praying Moms is and what do you all do? Yeah, Million Praying Moms was founded by Brooke McLaughlin and um, it's a ministry that helps moms um, know how to pray scripture for their kids. And one of Brooke's um, passions is having these prayer journals. And um, it's just been a sweet thing to see um, them just really kind of um, take off to um, to really catch the attention of moms. Um, and so the first one was Everyday Prayers for Joy. There was Everyday Prayers um, for the school year. And then um, peace and patience. I was really glad patience was already done. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to write that book. Um, and so um, when I was approached about writing the next installment of this series, um, it's kind of going through the fruit of the spirit and, and praying um, around those fruits that we find in Galatians. And so, um, but faith has just been very personal to me and to my story. And um, so I was just really thankful to be able to um, to kind of speak to that topic and how we pray around the idea of faith and God's faithfulness. Well, I'm going to be joining this million praying moms thing because I am a mother and I know the effectiveness and need of prayer. So I love yeah. it. I know that within that group and throughout your book, you implement this model of prayer of think, pray, and praise. Could you share with us a little bit of what that looks like and how it is really effective in creating more delight in your prayer? I think this is actually one of the reasons why um, I love these prayer journals. So I, I am an um, inductive Bible teacher by, like, that's my ministry. I have a ministry called Feasting on Truth, and I teach inductive Bible study. And I'm always a little weary, honestly, of devotionals because um, we should be feasting on God's word more than we feast on others. So we should we should be feasting on God's word, not snacking on um, his word and feasting on other people's words. Um, but what I love so much about these is this is not a devotional that you're going to just pick up and you're going to read and check it off your day. It, it creates interaction for you with the scripture, with um, the truth about God for that day. And so um, it encourages you in the think to think about it, to think critically about the passage. What are you learning about God in that um, to write out your own prayer. And I always encourage women to use the scripture as a starting point to kind of rephrase it in your own way to, to craft a prayer and then to praise, because um, I actually feel like this is one of the most important and I think the most powerful aspects of prayer that often gets overlooked is being able to praise God for who he is in that conversation with him. And it's always, um, 
the rebound effect is that it always reminds me who he is that, and that brings such peace and calm and um, rest in seasons that are really hard when I remember that. Praise really is what brings us into his courts. It allows us to experience mm -hmm. him. And I love that you said the feasting on his word, not snacking on it mm. and feasting on other people's yeah. words. That is so powerful. In your book, you actually have a scripture that I would consider is like the anchor scripture. And it comes from 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians 1, 19 through 20. It says, Jesus Christ is the son of God and he is the one whom Timothy, Silas and I have preached to you. And he has never been both a yes and a no. He has always been and always will be for us a resounding yes. For all of God's promises find their yes of fulfillment in him. And as his yes and our man, men ascend to God and we bring him glory. Could you take just a moment to break down this scripture for us and the significance of it for your life and in your book? I think one of the things um, that I've just kind of seen over the time and I've seen in my own life um, is that we just think um, we either don't know what God's promises are, or we don't understand. Um, we ask God to fulfill a promise to us, or we say, you know, in your word, you say this, well, his promises are all yes and amen in Jesus. And that's what this verse is really saying is that those promises are ours. Um, my grandmother, who actually just passed away last week, part of her legacy is um, her recognition. She said she um, came to a point in her life, she had actually been gifted an inheritance from her father who died when she was two. Um, she was the last living heir and she was in, you know, a young mom and, you know, found out that she had an inheritance she didn't know about. And she just had to claim it. And she was vacuuming one day and she tells the story with such clarity. She said she had to sit down because she almost heard an audible voice. Like, so are my promises. They're there. They're yours. You've done nothing to earn them, but all you have to do is claim them. And she always called them her gold nuggets, um, which comes out of the second Peter verse that talks about how that they are, um, they're a treasure that they are worth um, of great value, his promises. And so knowing his promises, like they are a yes in Christ, but we have to know what they are so that we can claim them. I love that to claim, to lay hold. It's yes and amen. And, you know, whenever we talk mm -hmm. about this, Aaron, my mind instantly goes to those who are struggling, right? You know, it doesn't always mm -hmm. look like a yes and amen to his promises. It looks like contrary of that. You know, it looks like I'm, I'm declaring the promise, I'm claiming it, but I'm not seeing the fulfillment of it. I know you and your yeah. family have gone through some recent health struggles. Could you share with us some yeah. of those questions that popped up in your heart and how you were able to personally address them through prayer? That's a huge part of my story of faith. Um, you know, I grew up in a Christian home. Um, went to Christian school, always involved in church. And um, it I always felt like I was able to kind of, I always say positivity my way out of hard situations. Um, and then about seven, eight years ago, my husband was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. And um, we spent two years really trying to find the right treatment for him that would get him back on his feet. And it was um, a really hard season. It was the first time I really came to God's word and said, okay, I think I've misunderstood something about your faithfulness here. Um, because we talk about, we'll say, you know, if somebody gets the job or somebody gets the answer to, you know, a prayer, they get the healing that they want. And we'll, what do we say? Our, our gut reaction is to say, God is faithful. But the problem with that is that what does that say to the person who didn't get the healing or didn't get the baby or didn't find the, the guy, you know, Valentine's Day, what does it say to them? And if God's promises are always a yes and amen, and his faithfulness is that he keeps his promises, it's like, I think I've misunderstood what you promised me. And I think a lot of the problem is that we hold God to promises that he never made. Mm. And so in that season with my husband, I really came to God's word going, okay, what have you promised me? Mm. And it was there that I realized <laughs> In John 16, 33, he actually promises us trouble. <laughs> like he didn't promise us good times. He didn't promise us. But what he did promise us is worth 
um, so much more. They are those gold nuggets. And um, seeing that and understanding what his promises really are helps us to be able to see them. And so in that season, um, God just really kind of gripped my heart with a passion for his word and a passion to discover his character in the word. Um, And as we kind of went on, you know, we're like, okay, great. Like we, we got through that. Um, he's doing really well. Um, it's under control. And then 2020 hit (laughs) and like all these feelings come back of, of what it's, you know, this collective hard thing that we all had to go through. Um, and we get through that and I'm like, okay, 2022, this is going to be our year. Um, and then my youngest son was diagnosed with type one diabetes, which has been far harder and um, far more exhausting than anything I had been through. Um, And in all of this, it's not that I didn't believe God could heal my husband or heal my son. It's just that we live in a broken world and I am promised trouble. And I had to, um, I had to really understand that um, we may not get the healing this side of heaven. You know, Um, we just yesterday um, laid my grandmother to rest And she is now healed and whole in the presence of Jesus um, because she loved her Savior so very much. And so recognizing that, okay, if that's not what we're promised this side of heaven, then, then how do I live in such a way that I understand what his promises are? And y'all, he has been so faithful. Um, When my son was diagnosed, I wasn't sitting around. I was tired. I was not like spending hours in Bible study and all this stuff. I was in survival mode. But I knew to remember that God promised to be with us. And so my prayer was, Lord, I know you promised to be with me. So let me see where you are. Mm. And uh, he has so faithfully answered that prayer. I'm so sorry for the loss of your grandmother, first of all. I mean, it is so hard. (laughs) Thank you. Um, And it sounds like she was such an incredible woman. And I'm thankful that she implanted and imparted into you the things that um, the Lord had taught her. Uh, You know, when when you share that, even with your recent struggles with your husband and with your son and then the loss of your grandma, it doesn't mean life is easy. And and like you said, Jesus has promised us trouble. When we're going through those trouble moments, and even when things are great, what are some of those subtle ways we as believers can recognize God's faithful presence in our lives? I tell this story in the book. It's actually day two. Um, God is faithfully present. And um, there was a, um, you know, I was having a discussion (laughs) with my husband. We were tired, and I was just like, I'm going to go shopping because that's what I do. Uh, (laughs) Not healthy. It's okay. I'm admitting that on television. It's fine. Um, But anyway, I was, I I ran to the store and I was like, what am I going to say if I run into someone I know? Like, how am I going to be? I mean, literally this was the week after he was diagnosed. How am I going to be on it? You know, can I fake it when someone says, how are you doing? And sure enough, I turn a corner and there in the school supply aisle is a very long time friend. And um, she says, how you doing? <laughs> and just tears started flowing. And I shared with her what was going on with us. And she gave me the exact word. She goes, Aaron, you know, I remember something you told me years ago. She said in, in the wilderness, God didn't give them manna for tomorrow, except for on the sixth day for the day of rest. She said she only, he only gave them what they needed for that day. She's like, don't worry about what you need for tomorrow. He hasn't given you that yet, but he will in the morning. And it was the exact word that I needed in that moment of stress and and anxiety and, and hardship. And I could have chalked that up to coincidence, you know, oh yeah, yeah. I just happened to run into this friend, but we have a very deliberate God Mm -hmm. who ordains the steps and it was not on accident. And, and the Lord used her that day. And it was such a reminder to me that he's faithfully present. And so I think for us, we need to be, um, live with an awareness that he is present with us and asking him that question, where are you today? Don't let me miss you. Don't let me miss where you're working. Um, Because he is faithful um, to be with us, to be before us, behind us, underneath us, and with us. 
Um, and so um, we just need to be willing to open our eyes, I think, and live with a, a God awareness of where he is and where he's working. I love the idea of a God awareness because he truly is our present help in a time yeah. of trouble. Aaron, would you just take a moment and look into the camera and minister and mm -hmm. pray to that one who might be where you were on the verge of tears, feeling like, God, where are you in the moment? And encourage her or him to trust God. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Father God, I just... Um, I know, Lord, that there are people out there who have questions. Lord, they are walking through something and they cannot reconcile um, who you are with what they are going through. And so, Lord, I just pray, God, I just pray that you would be so present to them today, that you would reveal yourself to them, that they would have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to perceive, Lord, what you are doing in their life. Help them know that their, your faithfulness is not tied to their earthly circumstances, but that, God, you are a God who can take what the enemy means for evil and you can use it to refine us and to teach us of who you are and to grow us closer to you. Lord, I just pray that they would see you, Lord, and that they would be able to take hold of what you have promised them, that they would hold fast to their faith because we know that you have promised and you are faithful to keep your promises. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Aaron, thank you so much for your ministry and thank you so much for this beautiful book and being with us today. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It's just been such a joy. Well, listen, when we come back, we're going to take a moment to look at Sydney and see what she has coming up on this week's edition of the Glory Hour. Hey Hope Today family, happy Valentine's Day. It's Love Day, but we're gonna talk about something on the Glory Hour coming up today on YouTube. You don't wanna miss it. That can disrupt love, all right? It is with offense because do you forgive and forget or do you hold a grudge and refuse to let it go? Well, if your answer is yes, you're in good company because we are gonna be talking about getting offended. We know offense is the antithesis to love. So whether the transgression comes from your boo thing, your spouse, your friend, your coworker, your pastor, we are gonna talk about about how to handle hurt feelings. And so you don't wanna miss my conversation with Patricia King because we're gonna talk about how to navigate breakdowns in relationships through the lens of love. Lord, help me to be saturated with love so that no matter what, everything that oozes out of me is love. So good. You don't want to miss it. And, you know, we're also going to get into, did you know there's a science behind forgiveness? Well, you're going to find out what experts have to say is the best way to heal from a wound of offense. So be sure to join me for the Glory Hour today, Wednesday at 3 p.m. on our Cornerstone Television Network YouTube channel. Check out the podcast. I can't wait to see you there because, y'all, we're going to get our hearts in check, our hearts fixed, and I cannot wait to see you there. You can catch new episodes of the Glory Hour weekly on Cornerstone's YouTube page. Plus, you can now find it on Spotify. I absolutely love Spotify. And also, be sure to tune in Saturday evenings at 11 p.m. for you night owls to watch it right here on Cornerstone Television Network. Listen, if you are just joining us, we just had an incredible conversation with Erin Warren focusing on her book, Everyday Prayers for Faith. And let me tell you, she's said some things that was so powerful. I believe that purpose is produced so much more in pressure. So if there's one thing you want to remember is purpose is produced in pressure and it brings out an oil. If you find anything, whether it's wine or oils, there is a crushing. And a lot of times in seasons of crushing, God, he literally pulls out who we really are. But then one thing for many of us, we struggle with this, and this is something I have to continually take to the cross, is our desire and our addiction to be in control of how things are going to happen, how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. And one thing she had said is a story that she was sharing about her grandmother, who her, her grandmother's father had an inheritance for her that she did not know about, and all she had to do was claim it. And the word of God is filled with promises of God that are active upon us claiming them 
These, see, the Bible is full of if-then statements. If my people who are called by my name, if you would have just trusted me. So it's not just this, this, this intentional, willful, mindful thing. Literally, God is saying to us, if you would but seek me first, the kingdom and his righteousness, and all, and all these other things will be added to you. So I'm telling you, and I'm encouraging you right now, that the enemy is trying to defeat many of us with unbelief and thinking that God is not with us, he is not for us, he doesn't see us, he hasn't heard us. But more than anything that you will listen to, whether it's a devotional or you go on YouTube and you want to listen to a message, sit in God's word. Just last night, I went to bed with the word of God playing in my ear right next to me. I was in Colossians and I woke up, I was in Revelation chapter one, but letting the word of God and the promises of God get into my subconscious yes. because I feel like many of us need subconscious healing. What did you think today about this conversation? Yeah, I think it's really important what she said about feasting on God's word and not snacking on it. Ooh. Just like you were saying last night, going to bed with those scriptures yeah. playing, filling our heart and our mind with his word. Because as she shared and as we shared 2 Corinthians 1, 19, all of it, all of it has been and always has been a resounding yes and finds its fulfillment in him. Listen, it is not that everything around you looks great. It's not that everything in you is feeling real good and you're just progressing and looking like you're going from glory to glory. There are moments where you're in the from state. You're in the in-between state. But I think when Erin was speaking today, I loved Corey that she was sharing. It was her hardships. It was those moments of the crushing, like you said, that really drawed her into the presence of the Lord. What I wanna to say to you who's watching today, it is a yes and amen from the Father. He is the fulfillment of every promise. He is the answer to every question and the solution to every struggle you have. Maybe today you've never given your life to Jesus and so you don't know what it's like to have an answer that brings you peace. Well, he's it. And if you want to give your life to Jesus, all you have to do is say, Lord, come into my heart. Change me. Make me new. I see the wickedness, the sinfulness of my ways, and he will make you a new creation. God is the one who is merciful and kind, and he has goodness for you on every side. Take hope and trust in Jesus that all that you need and all that you want is found in him. There's hope today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, searching for joy while navigating through the difficulties of this troubled world. Radio host and author Brant Hansen shares his personal journey of overcoming difficult circumstances and offers a message of hope on how we can attain joy through Jesus. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.